Oh boy. That's got a little weight to it. <laughs> Don't you love it when you pre-order something and the pre-order comes in a week after you see it at your local box store? Yeah, that's what happened with this one. So I've been waiting for this blaster for quite a while. So I pre-ordered it on, I believe it's target.com. And yeah, the thing came like a week later and the, every target in my area had these. So I went out and bought another one. Now, in all fairness, if anyone's been trying to buy official demolisher rockets for the past, I don't know, year or so, you'll see that they have been really expensive. So in fact, this thing comes with six. I think I even saw it as much as like, you know, a few of them for like 40 bucks. So I don't know. I figured, hey, it's six rockets for like, what is it, 60 bucks? Which I know a lot of you are probably like, holy, that's that's crazy. But for someone who's been trying to uh, gather demolisher rockets, I don't know, it was worth it. So here we are with my modified Fortnite GL. I wanted to make this thing not be a hamp, essentially. So I wanted to give it a trigger and also make it more accurate. Now, full disclaimer here, this thing is not that accurate. I don't know what's going on with the actual GL design. I believe it's probably the barrel. I think it might be hitting the sides or something because it is not as accurate as it should be. Pretty much everything you see back here is what I've added and this stuff all works flawlessly. So if you want to see how I built this monstrosity, stick around and I'll show you. <laughs> So when I first got the Fortnite GL in my hands, I immediately thought, where's my trigger? And where is the rest of my stock? Cause that is just weird. So I started thinking, you know, this thing needs a little bit more going on back here. Maybe at least a trigger. I do like the pistol grip. It's very nice. However, there's no trigger. So I, I also wanted to go ahead and try a pneumatic system cause I haven't really modded pneumatics yet. So that brings us to my modded Fortnite GL. In its current form right now, this is a proof of concept that actually functions. So I'm gonna go over the various systems in here. There are three primary areas to look at. There's electrical, pneumatic, and then of course mechanical. So we're gonna go ahead and go through this whole blaster. I'm gonna show you how this thing actually functions. And before we do that, let's just do a quick overview. So this is a pressure regulated system that goes up to 60 PSI. I have a battery indicator to show me how much power is in my LiPo. I am running a 3S LiPo and I have a full system cutoff. In the back here, there is a switch that is rigged up for normally closed. So when we turn the system on, pressure will build until it hits a switch and then it stops. So pressure will build back here, which gives me 60 PSI to fire a rocket. After firing, you can see it just charges right back up. And from in between firing a rocket and charging the system, it's, a, it's about five seconds or so. So not too bad, but I know for people who like that full auto, boom, 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 you're not gonna really get it with this. Now, I could try a different pump in here, try a different type of, you know, maybe even do a CO2 type thing. But as of right now, in this configuration, you have a shot. Well, also you index. So you got the original indexing system. So it does not automatically spin yet. But, you know, I just kind of kept the same mechanics that were up here. I disabled the hamp system and then put the hose in. So we're gonna start with just kind of a full breakdown of the shell and show all the internals of the stock blaster. And then we'll go ahead and then jump right into the mod.
So I want to take a moment to kind of go over the shell work that I've done. You can clearly see that we have a mag strike back here. Here is the front part of the GL. And then in the middle is an actual box that I found at Lowe's. And this is a conduit box. And essentially these are used for, I believe this is actually for outdoor use where they can put electrical components and keep it watertight. It's kind of like a utility box. And this one in particular seemed like it was a good size to fit, you know, the pump over here. So I can actually fit the pump in there. Got some electronics here. On this side, I took two boxes actually uh, this is a smaller conduit box and i was able to make a tray which i just cut the top of one off and then epoxied it onto there i actually ended up uh, sinking brass inserts in there so that we can have a battery access panel i'm probably still going to put some type of bracket back there so the battery's not flopping around inside there but at least now we have an access panel as you can see we have a nice line where the cut is done so i'll go ahead and post an image of where the cut is to be made for that and then over here this one doesn't matter too much because all we're doing is we're just sliding this on this is kind of more of a friction fit once it's all put together and then this will pretty much sit here and i'll end up doing a coupler type thing that just kind of holds this in place i've not made that piece yet but it should be just kind of quick and easy so the first area which is mechanical which is this for forward pump indexing system which i didn't really touch so this is all the stock of how it functions i did keep the original plunger tube assembly in there but i did remove the o-ring and i did cut the hose so there's no air really flowing through it and there's no resistance when you index so i just wanted to maintain the original functionality of how this thing rotates the drum now in the back there's not a lot of mechanical there is the motor which you know we we know we see how the motor works in the pneumatic section i'll kind of go into detail but for mechanics back here we just have the trigger and it's a super simple trigger all it is is just a spring and a trigger and then there's a relief valve which you hit which is actually stock for the mag strike. But that pretty much covers all the mechanical functionality of the blaster. Let's go ahead and jump into the electrical wiring. Okay, I just finished up the electrical system. So I'm gonna go over what is going on here because uh, it had to do electronics first before I do pneumatics. And so because of once I put the pump in there and position everything, I won't be able to really point out what's going on back here. As we can see here, we'll start the battery. So we have an XD60 wired up. This will be put in on the other side of the shell. There's gonna be an access panel where that battery goes. And as we can see, the positive runs down into a switch. This is a master cutoff switch. So this is basically the entire circuit can be turned on and off with the switch down here. And in line, we have a, so when the switch is on, we flow through this board down here. So the board uh, essentially is a power indicator. It basically shows how much uh, battery power is left in the LiPo. And that is in line right off the switch. And of course, real quick, let me just go over the negative because it's super easy. It just goes from XT60, so battery, over to motor and then to the LED or to the battery indicator. So, and that is the entire negative circuit. Positive circuit, however, goes from battery. So XD60 comes up, goes to the master switch. And then from the master switch, we then go, you know, we tag over here onto the battery indicator and then we run all the way, as we can see here, it's kind of hard to track, but we run all the way back here to this switch. This is wired up as normally closed, which means in this current configuration, which I put a clamp on it, there is not power flowing through it. This is to indicate when this piston is all the way extended. So we're gonna mount the switch back here. When the piston's fully extended, that means pressure is full. We have full pressure in the system. So we don't want the motor running. And that's why that's wired up as normally closed. When you release it, and then current will flow back up and around to the motor and actually turn the motor on. Recap or just to summarize, when master switch is on, this tank is always pressurized. That's what the system is attempting to do. So whenever you have master switch on, it's gonna be working to fill the tank. So let's go ahead and demonstrate. Right now, we have simulated that the tank is full. So system is on. Now when we open up the switch, the motor will keep running until this piston fills up and turns it off. So now let's move on to pneumatics. So with electronics aside, you can clearly see this is a pretty simple wire job. You just have a motor and a switch and then a full system cutoff switch. I know there's a lot going on here, but this is just the same circuit. And all it is is you're just putting these in, in path. So it really, and you don't even need these to be honest. I highly recommend at least having a kill switch because 
you know, if things were to go bad in there, you want a way to just turn it off without having to fish around and pull out your LiPo. But yeah, just uh, one little switch back here, one full system switch and a motor. So pretty simple to wire up. So let's go ahead and dive into the pneumatics and let me show you how this system works pneumatically. So the pneumatics is all done. We have, we'll start at the pump. So when a pump is turned on, it flows down here into this chamber here and fills up the bladder. Of course, when the bladder gets too large or fills up too much, it pushes a switch, which tells the pump to shut down. This up here is check valve placed under the trigger. So when you open the check valve, air flows through here and then goes where the rocket fires. So let's go ahead and test it just to show this thing working and then the shut off. So now system is primed. It's still on. So when I pull this trigger, it should shoot and then continue pumping. And that's pretty much pneumatics in a nutshell. This thing works a little better when it's actually enclosed because as you can see, it pumped up a little bit too much. So in the end, we are pretty much using a lot of the uh, stock mag strike technology in here of how this thing functions with the added pump. Now this mod has been around for quite some time. There's many posts on how to make a full automatic, you know, mag strike. So check some of that material out if you're interested in that. Um, I'm happy to see how these things merge together. I'm glad to see the proof of concept actually working. And uh, from here, it's just, you know, some more tinkering and some optimization that needs to happen. In particular, there's a seal up here that I'm not too fond of, which I'm losing pressure. And of course, I'm not too fond of the barrel. I don't know if I'm gonna widen the barrel out, maybe just give it more room to travel in there because I do feel like the missiles are actually kind of hitting the sides of the barrel as they leave, so which greatly impacts accuracy. But other than that, that pretty much concludes this build guide. Well, I'm Dr. Flux. I wanna take a moment to thank you for watching this video. I make content like this to try to inspire people to try you know, outlandish things like this. So in the comment section, let me know, is this something you're looking to build? I'd love to see other designs and solutions to this uh, comically large blaster that has pretty poor performance out of the box, but uh, Curious to see how we address these issues. So let me know in the comment section what you plan to do or if you've already done something, I'd love to see it. Once again, I wanna thank you for watching and as always, happy foam flinging.